Coming up next on the Jeff Curley Show, we're going to talk to the great Larry Levine. He is the founder of Chili's. We're going to catch up with him and find out what he's up to now. That's next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I can't tell you how excited I am to talk about this next guest. Larry Levine is an absolutely legendary restaurateur. He is the founder of Chili's Restaurants. Larry, thank you for coming on my show. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> and you're a very modest guy. You've had this amazing, uh, you know, success. But uh, it didn't always start out that way. Like you had a flop or two before you uh, landed on Chili's. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, a childhood friend and I were going to do a hamburger restaurant. And his mother had a great recipe for prime rib, and I had a recipe for these giant shrimp. So we thought if we have shrimp and uh, prime rib, we shouldn't we'll postpone the hamburger concept. So we did that. And our knowledge of the restaurant industry at that point was about a zero. So, <laughs> but after six months, it made money. And then we went back to our dream and, and found the Chili's location and did that. Okay. And more on that in a second, but let's go ahead and watch this overview. This is the story of Chili's. The story of Chili's is actually, necessarily, also sort of the story of Brinker International, the parent company that owns the Chili's brand of restaurants. In 1967, Larry Levine, a young man fresh off a failed attempt at a music career, attended the inaugural Terlingua Chili Cook-Off, hosted in Terlingua, Texas. The Chili Cook-Off was hosted by none other than racing legend Carol Shelby, who coincidentally was Larry Levine's father-in-law. From that moment on, Mr. Levine was hooked on the concept of the chili cook-off. A few years later, on March 13, 1975, Larry Levine would open the first Chili's restaurant where they served gourmet burgers and french fries and were known for having lines out the door. Around this time, in 1978, a man by the name of Doug Brooks would also begin working at Chili's, but more on him in a bit. Throughout the rest of the 1970s, Larry would continue expanding the number of Chili's locations. Continuing into the 1980s, things were still going very well for Chili's. By this time, they had opened 23 locations spread across six different states. This success caught the attention of famed restaurant tycoon Norman Brinker. Larry Levine has stated that it was always his intention to sell Chili's, and in 1983, that's exactly what he did with Brinker International taking control of the Chili's chain of restaurants. This was only the beginning though, as Brinker had big plans for Chili's. Following shortly after the acquisition, Chili's was listed on the NASDAQ and announced their IPO. This led to a series of expansions and changes, including to the menu. In 1984, Chili's added fajitas to their menu, followed in 1986 by their baby back ribs. This was also the first time their now famous baby back ribs jingle hit the airwaves. The menu wasn't the only thing to expand though, as Chili's Inc. acquired Romano's Macaroni Grill in 1989. The 1990s is the period in which Chili's evolved from a small regional chain into the brand that everyone knows and recognizes today. For most people outside of the American Southwest, sometime in the 90s is probably when you first remember visiting a Chili's restaurant. In 1991, Chili's officially took the title of their parent company, Brinker International. In that same year, Chili's opened their first international restaurant in Canada, followed shortly after with a restaurant in Mexico in 1992. In 1994, after 11 years at the helm, Norman Brinker retired, appointing Ron McDougall as the new CEO of Brinker International. However, Norman would remain on as chairman of the board. Despite these changes, though, in 1996, Chili's would go back to their gourmet burger roots, introducing the Big Mouth Burgers to their menu. 
By the 2000s, Chili's was well on its way to becoming a brand recognized all over the world. 2002 would see Chili's team up with pop sensation NSYNC, who performed a cover of the famous Baby Bag Ribs song. In 2004, Ron McDougall stepped down as Brinker CEO. In his place, Doug Brooks was appointed as chairman of the board and CEO of Brinker, in addition to his president title. This is the same Doug Brooks that first started with Chili's back in 1978. And finally, on August 3rd, 2004, Chili's opened their 1000th restaurant at Pinnacle Park in Dallas, Texas. Which brings us nearly to the present. As of 2014, there were more than 1,600 Chili's in 33 countries and two territories. Every year, Chili serves roughly 281 million customers. A few quick stats. Chili's customers consume about 60.4 million pounds of fajita meat every year and roughly 20,000 miles of its famous baby back ribs. Chili's also claims that it serves enough burgers that put end to end, they would stretch for 3,000 miles. In 2013, Doug Brooks stepped down as Brinker CEO and president, but would remain as chairman of the board. Wyman Roberts was appointed as Brinker president and CEO, in addition to his president of Chili's title. Quelly takes the reins of a popular brand with a strong history. The fast casual industry as a whole is entering a period of uncertainty. And what happened to Larry Levine, the man who started it all? Well, he's still going at it as of today. Larry now runs a restaurant consulting group called Turtle Creek Restaurant Group. He also continues to open new restaurant projects, his latest being a barbecue restaurant called 1050 Barbecue, located in Richardson, Texas. So it would appear that after 40 years, the founding and sale of a massive restaurant chain and a number of additional restaurant endeavors, Larry is still happy to set up shop not too far from where he started at all. Now, Larry, as you watch that, and this is the first time you've seen that That's video. Correct. <laughs> Do you just kind of sit back and say, man, what a career? Well, it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I had a great team, and, and that's one of the reasons Chili worked. This concept was valid, but I had a great team of uh, uh, early executives that did a great job running the restaurants. And that song, uh, I Want My Baby Back, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to be humming it all day long. And when that appeared in an Austin Powers movie, uh, were you surprised? Oh, yeah, it was great. And, and you know, that really helped put them on the map. Yeah, and I think stop running it. I don't know why, but it was a great, great promotion. Okay, so um, I want to talk about why Dallas is such a fertile ground for restaurants. Because uh, while we were watching that piece, you mentioned several other concepts. What are some other concepts? Uh, well, uh, Steak and Ale started here. Velvet Taco, Mesa Mile has restaurants. The Twin Peaks, Del Frisco's, and. Restaurant companies will test Dallas. If it works in the Dallas market, it'll probably work anywhere because we don't have mountains and oceans and streams to go vacation or go hobby, uh, spend your hobby time. So people go to restaurants. That's their entertainment. So if it'll work in Dallas, it'll probably work anywhere. Okay. Now, I want to brag on Larry because uh, he wasn't just happy sitting, you know, sitting on his laurels. <laughs> He decided to open a new concept. You've probably had 12 different concepts yes. over the years, but a, a new concept that just launched three months ago is called Loop 9 Barbecue. We're going to pull up the website, and as we scroll down this, I got to ask you, I mean, I can't think of a more crowded category than barbecue. Why did you decide on barbecue? Uh, it, when, when we started with barbecue, there wasn't a barbecue restaurant on every corner like there is now, but we wanted to play in the premium barbecue market, meaning prime brisket that in, in Dallas and in Texas, that's how you judge a barbecue restaurant if it's serving great prime brisket. And so that, that's where we really hang our hat. Now, is it a recipe that you have been working on for years? Yeah, or I like to say I sacrificed a lot of cows and pigs to learn how to barbecue. <laughs> it's, the, the, the process is not very complicated once you learn, but you have to we buy premium product and respect it and cook it on an all wood fire and it, that you, uh, to, we don't take any shortcuts with the product or the process. And and Dallas, I think, is uh, you know very proud of its barbecue. And so uh, entering a, a market as crowded as this one, it's it's hard to impress people. What's been the reaction so far? Been very good. Uh, we're in a new development, the Epic Central development. It's just getting off the ground. It's going to have seven or eight restaurants. So we're excited for it. We have, think it has a lot of potential. Okay. As you kind of look out into the future, do you imagine uh, a Loop Nine? all across the country, similar to Chili's? Oh, we'll just have to wait and see on that. Yeah. 
I, I've, I've noticed that even, you know, there are so many cities that brag about their their barbecue. Yeah. So if you did, I'm going to ask you to uh, look into your crystal ball. If you were to open up in, say, a Kansas City or a Memphis where they're very proud of their barbecue, too, do you change the recipe? No, well, you picked two examples that I wouldn't, that they'd be the last restaurants I'd open. Kansas City <laughs> does not need more barbecue. But no, I think you'd keep the same. The formula is premium meat and premium brisket, and that's what it's all about. Okay, and you're very proud of your team. Let's talk about, you know, throughout your career in, in restaurants, um, picking the right team is critical, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, I think I was very fortunate to have a great team on the early, the, the early, 12 people that I hired at Chili's, and they were the ones that helped build the brand, really. It was a, the, the brand worked, but it only worked because I had a great team with me. Okay, and remind us of where Loop 9 is. It's in Grand Prairie on George Bush Freeway, which is between 20 and 30, and it's closer to 20. Outstanding. In a new development called Epic Central. Okay, so i got to ask you this question. Do you ever get tired of barbecue? No. Uh, we, we have to taste it all the time. So no, I mean, you, you couldn't eat it every day, every meal, but it, it's great. It, it a little, goes a long way. And he was telling me a story just before the show started about when occasionally he will go back to a Chili's and eat. And you have a card that says founder of Chili's? Yes, I do I have a, a founder's card. And when I give it to him, the, the manager has to come over and, and bring me my guest check. And I was telling him the story that uh, I, I gave it to a manager. And he looked at the card and he said, where did you find it? So I thought that was just great. That's one of the, the best founder stories I've got. <laughs> Outstanding. We've got a couple minutes left. Uh, final thoughts. What would you like to leave people with? Um, maybe encouraging uh, young uh, entrepreneurs and, and how they begin a journey like yours. Uh, I, I, I read a book a long time when I was in my 20s called uh, Think and Grow Rich. And it, it uh, planted a seed in my mind that to have a vision and a dream and, and don't lose that dream and do whatever it takes to get there. It, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, a lot of people don't wake up in the morning and think I'm going to satisfy my dream, but uh, you can. And you can find out more about Larry, his speaking career, and all of his restaurants on his website, which is turtlecreekrestaurantgroup.com. The great Larry Levine, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, enjoy it. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.